Welcome to TradeTheNBI.com. This is John. This report is for the 8th of December and holiday here in uh, Italy, at least, for the initiation. And not really a thing elsewhere, but that's interestingly enough, uh, the market behaving pretty much as we expected. We came back to the 45 uh, 45 number that we've been talking about, and they supported right off of it. And this is when we look at our DOC, we knew that that was the likelihood of the event simply because cyan still under red. While you can get some weakness, it's only going to come if we had the DOC pop above cyan and then come back, uh, the steel here come up above and then cross below. Um, it did not take place, so the expectation was that it would hold. They got enough extra short interest to help propel the move. And pushes it right back up to the top side of the uh, uh, move there. Uh, the only way that was ever going to get any weakness would be to have seen a dramatic move of uh, DOC sign over the red. Um, and that didn't take place. Uh, and likewise, the, the bigger concern wasn't from the S&P, it was from the NASDAQ, uh, which uh, had expressed far longer weakness. And we can go ahead and just take a look at the NASDAQ while we're talking about it. Right here, where the... Uh, MBI White had crossed above, but again, you still had uh, fairly decent strength from uh, DOC Steel, which is short-term buyers. They were enough to uh, turn things around, and then you can see the immediate uh, spiders. So this should be enough to keep propelling things because that's a strong move when you overtake short interest in a significant way, and it really starts to um, overwhelm. And in that case, forces the short covering. And again, there really isn't anything from an economic standpoint that uh, would justify uh, driving things down. Now, of course, I get a lot of people who disagree with that. But um, if you don't have a broader understanding of uh, the dynamic there, the idea that the Fed, uh, in the market's view, is going to be forced to ease um, is bullish because lower rates for the market uh, mean it's going to go up. It also means that uh, the money that would be going to the Treasury is going to have to move into the market because of uh, higher return. And it, it's not complicated. It's sort of basic stuff. We've been seeing this move from uh, bonds, and it's outside of you know where the Fed really is. So we passed that uh, threshold, well, right down around the 88, 89 range. And so the market has moved to quantitative easing uh, before the Fed has even got there, which, you know, prompted Powell and them to say otherwise, but the market really isn't believing what they're saying. They're just basically seeing, you know, severe difficulties within the ec economic move. But the, the, the reality is there's still so much excess liquidity built in from all of this excess spending and uh, all that free money that was flowing and the continuation of the deficits and that. Um, the market feels the Fed is sort of a hamstring. They didn't think that they could get this far with rates in the first place, um, but they have. They just think that it's all going to have to be reversed anyway. And uh, bond market wrong. Uh, they've been wrong all year, so uh, it doesn't surprise me. And, uh, you know, all these, you know, discussions about, you know, imminent collapse of everything that you've heard all year long, and I've just been warning you not to buy into that uh, kind of talk because it just, hasn't been justified. The reality is the move of oil really represents a significant uh, indicator as to where things are likely to go. And we've seen this steady drop in oil, um, which has been an economic lifesaver, so to speak. And it actually goes against uh, everything you're seeing in the bond market and that because the reduction in oil is going to ease pressures of inflation. And that doesn't mean inflation stopped because we're still way too high for oil uh, for inflation to be, you know, within the Fed target range. But uh, it takes an awful lot of pressure and it isn't continuing to squeeze. So, you know, from the upper echelons, not affected from the, you know, lower and middle class. Yeah, they're hurt uh, significantly, but they're okay with that, uh, especially since the amount of uh, public assistance that they spend, which is most of that deficit money, uh, literally fuels uh, more low end consumer buying uh, for staples. So, uh, keeps things moderately ugly if that's a good way to describe it moderately ugly um the irony is you get things like this which are also outsized moves uh the euro you did had germany you know record low output for production and things like that they're a real energy problem uh throughout europe and it isn't being resolved anytime soon certainly uh discounted oil helps but 
uh, the reality is the economies there aren't moving. And so the euro, even being where it is uh, above the you know parity level, is still uh, way too high. But you're always going to get these kinds of displacements in the market as you get uh, people positioned too strongly in one direction, and then you force an opposite push the opposite way, and then it comes back. And you know, this is what we see in the market. This is why I was saying that you know intraday trades from you know uh, short signals that we get absolutely worth taking because you're going to get uh, you know pretty significant retracements within it. But you've got to be able to be flexible enough to turn around and go with it. And that's why I've been saying, you know, no long term short from uh, any view that we have from a daily standpoint now and just short term runs. And you just have to wait until uh, those kinds of things change for it to be uh, significant. And it, we don't have the, the readings or the numbers to justify a change yet. Uh, the suppression of gold relative to what you're seeing in other asset classes is like, you know, the Bitcoins or the uh, Crypto space uh, certainly is a reflection of the power and why they're so anxious to get these on uh, the cryptos on ETFs and things like that, because it allows them then to control much more how that supply and demand. And, and we noticed this even when Bitcoin, uh, I talked about it uh, way back in the day when it first became an ETF. Uh, or I mean, futures trade, and you could then at that particular point, uh, you had the option of shorting and uh, creating a displacement within the buying and selling of it that allows them to, you know, really have a strong move. And of course, once they started talking about getting into the ETF, well, they had to start acquiring it. And they did that all during the uh, crypto winter. And that allowed for then the explosion back from going through. So when buy signals were coming in here around the 27 range and that, it was more than happy to tell you, hey, so the time to be thinking about that. And sure enough, uh, is where we're at now. You continue to look at that, still very strong. This is even better than the, uh, the NASDAQ or the S&P from a reading standpoint. That's I and uh, DOC readings and that, and super strong MBI with the Magenta. Uh, pretty much staying well over the 25 level uh, all the way through and certainly uh, staying above uh, yellow, which is always maintaining the bullish. We had a period of consolidation there for a while. Um, so it's all pretty consistent. Uh, interestingly enough, the ETH had been so far behind, finally catching up a bit uh, on its run. So that move, pushing it through. And any in his sight? Well, not necessarily. Um, but you still have a lot of conflict with governments uh, and their ability to either approve or deny. And if they start moving towards approval, you know they've got control of the situation. So um, that would be the only way they're going to allow it to take place. And so that you see some regulatory approval and things starting to move forward means they've got a handle on it. Um, we can see from our 50K, well, we had the nice move down. Clean turnaround with MBI Magenta moving back above that led to the spike. And then once we got to the 50% range, you had a continuation of uh, MBI Magenta leading, and that's enough to uh, continue to push it and should move towards the 100%. In fact, you still have uh, MBI uh, uh, Magenta over yellow at this particular stage and back above the 25. So that's also going to be a positive short term buyers here in this case, uh, holding things up even with the slight DOC spread spider that took place, which is why you saw some of this little back and forth move here and trying to clear any little stops, but very effective from, you know, wiping out a little bit of the long side trade, just moving back within the range, but nothing catastrophic. When we look at it from an intraday standpoint, so you had the big move lower and then it, as pre-market uh, opened up, the European session drove it up higher uh, during soft period. And then by the time we opened, it pushed up to even new highs. And then you had some nice fillback of positive extremes that were created within the setup and a turnaround move that uh, went throughout the rest of the day. Now we see later on there were a few MBI white spikes, which would call for a move back towards the 50% range. And then once we get to the 50% range, that MBI white spike that took place here uh, was suggesting a zero move that took place just after the market closed. So all clean. Uh, this is very accurate uh, uh, from our viewpoint. So reality is everything is pretty much uh, operating within a normal structure. And I don't see any incongruencies with it at this point. Uh, we can argue the economics of it, but you're in a condition now with the way the U.S. Uh, uh, 
setup is with the Fed and everything, that it's complicated for a lot of people to discern what's really taking place, which that kind of confusion is actually perfect because the real market players aren't confused by this, and that's how they're able to uh, whipsaw things to the point where uh, people just are utterly confused. They're either going to have to move towards buy and hold and just be uncertain of things and just hope and pray, uh, particularly when it comes to things like crypto, they just all jump in now. You got all the crypto bulls talking about, you know, Bitcoin to a billion and <laughs> everything else. So that's always going to continue and you just have to get past the noise and stick with the readings and go from there. So it's the long and the short of it for now. As always, though, I'll continue to update you on anything relevant on the Skype chat. Have a good one. Trade well.